Hello, I'm back and I'm ready to do some actual tasks. Um, I got a handy new microphone stand that's on a swivel arm, super cool, only a little bit of annoying shadow on my face. And I, <laughs> I was editing the last video and I don't watch um, things like this typically. I don't watch a lot of people talking to cameras like or dev videos in general, um, not really my interest. Uh, uh, don't really watch a lot of YouTube in general. But I was editing this last one and I noticed how close to the camera I was. And once I was in full screen, 4K high definition, I was like, that's too close. So I'm gonna sit back a little farther from now on. Um, <laughs> I did not need to see my pores that closely. So um, I'm ready to do some actual tasks. I have my big list. And um, I thought I would jump right in and do something that's been kind of bothering me for a while. There's, um, there's a heat wave right now. So you're gonna hear that air conditioner for the next couple months. Um, and so one of the, the tasks that I put off, usually when I, I decide what I'm gonna do, I have these kind of, um, these hunches about like ideas that are I think are really gonna work and, and really have a lot of impact. And then I also have things that, um, that sort of like eat at me a little bit because they seem wrong, but I don't have a solution that like jumps out to me that is like definitely right. I very rarely come up with an idea that I execute on that does not turn out the way that I had hoped. Um, sometimes it's because um, there's some subtlety involved and I need to kind of finesse it, but usually I, I'm right about my hunches. Um, so what I've come down to with a lot of this project is all of the little ideas that I have that I wanna try that I'm not 100% sure are good ideas. And so um, this was, <laughs> today was one of those uh, uh, tasks. So um, I'll just kind of show you what I was thinking and, and um, where it, it ended up. So, uh, so this is Jumper. Jumper is a um, obviously named game where you jump and um, originally it was just a black ball on black lines. And the whole point of it was like, you know, if you're playing Mario, uh, that's sort of two skills, right? Run and jump. And then um, once you add obstacles and like enemies, then you're dodging. But those, a, a dodge is still just a run and a jump, right? And so, uh, you know, how do you make that simpler than you don't run, you just jump. So, you know, it, the ball's automatically moving and all you have to do is click the button. So, you know, there are games like this on, I have a game like this on my phone that's much better than this one because it has, like there's a level of, like um, there's like a gravity element and then there's like things that are coming at you and you have to make decisions in the sort of like split second. This is supposed to be, be if you're not good at those games and you just need to get down some coordination. Like this is like literally a game for babies. Uh, as you can see, I can talk and play. I'm barely even looking at this. Um, and so, you know, I have, I had a friend who plays my games on occasion and this one was really challenging for her. And for me, like I could do this in my sleep. Uh, so originally these were, this was just a black ball and black lines and um, it just really wasn't quite enough. And so I added the color to it, right? So now, now it's got some like pop. It feels like you're, you're the, the uh, environment is reacting to your behavior, which is like a big part of, you know, what we, uh, what I call user experience, but a name has been diluted in the industry to the point where it means basically nothing. So, um, the one thing about this game, and I'll probably talk about this later when I talk about like sound and how I approach sound, uh, I wonder if I can turn this light up, it's kind of dark, um, is that, you know, I take into consideration the sound of your mouse clicking as a part of the game, right? Like that's what user experience really means. It's not just the interface and not just the um, the pieces of the software itself. Like there's also the environment you're in. Like if you play this on the bus, that's part of a user experience, right? So um, even the sound of your finger tapping against your phone when you play this, like that's part of the experience. So um, there's a lot of games, it's this one's it's the, the biggest version of this, but like, that uh, to me, that's the sound effect is the clicking of my mouse. Um, it, it, you can't, you know, <laughs> can't always convince people about that. Uh, so, you know, I thought, well, maybe it needs some sound, maybe it needs some background music. I don't really think too much about background music because I'm not a musician. Um, and I feel like that's something that if I add it to one game, I need to add it to all the games. So I need to have like a really good, I need to make a really like strong choice and stick with it. Um, so I thought, you know, maybe for this game, 
I can make some sound, right? Like so it when you when you play the game, it lights up a color. These colors are associated with notes. Uh, right now they're just running through the the rainbow and then they start over. Um, but this is a, a very similar idea to Rhythm Runner, where you know you're still you know you're pressing a button when something gets to the place it needs to be, right? Um, and it, it's effectively the same idea. Instead of jumping, I'm hitting the notes as they come, but it's effectively the same thing, right? Like it feels like it's the same thing. It's just slightly more complex. So my idea was that, well, what if I took these two ideas and put them together? Uh, and now I'm just playing it. Okay. Um, and made it so that the, the platforms make sounds as you go. And I, my original thought was to take this as an opportunity to um, uh, have the environment react to your skills and your interests by having the key that the game plays in be the key that you have the highest score in. And so then I thought about it some more. I'm like, oh, well, this might also be an opportunity to introduce people to keys that they don't play in. So what if I reverse it or randomize it? And then um, I thought, well, if I randomize it, then that gives me an opportunity to give you some points in um, the different keys, right? So you can get some charisma and some music scores, even if you're not interested in playing music games per se, because you're playing in a key, you are still experience. You're still experiencing that, so you should still get like at least a couple skill points in that key. So um, that was my idea. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Uh, very logical. Let's do it. Uh, and so that's what I did this morning. And I guess switch over to the other monitor. Maybe I should bring this over. Um, so yeah, I'll just play it here. Um, so I implemented that, and now the game looks like this in Unity. Um, so I, I set it to pick a key and play in that key. Now, um, Rhythm Runner, even though it's random notes and random intervals, it still feels like you're playing a song. When music plays, when you're playing Rhythm Runner, uh, this is horrible. This I played this for like a minute, and it was it felt like I was um, felt like listening to like a child play a violin, like it just grating on my nerves. Every one of these sounds was driving me crazy. Um, it sounds terrible. Uh, let's see what happens if I go farther. Um, and I was like, well, is it, the, is it the piano sound? What if I made it a xylophone? And this is one of the reasons why you should always make a minimum viable product first, because I could have gone and found some sounds. Like, I thought a, a very subtle xylophone would be perfect for this. But um, what I think the problem is is that the is the variability between not just these um, platforms, but also the amount of leeway you have to click, right? Like you don't jump in the middle of the platform, you jump when it's most appropriate to jump. And that might be, depending on how far the next platform is, it might be at the very end, it might be a little bit in the middle. And so um, you have a lot less leeway in the music games, so it mostly stays on beat. And if you aren't on beat, then it doesn't make the sound. In this case, if you hit the platform, it's gonna hit. It's gonna make the sound. And so, <laughs> it's. Um, I think it's just fundamentally, based on how I designed this game, fundamentally anathema to music. Because um, when I'm when I hear the ticking of my my mouse, that feels rhythmic. But when it comes at you as like a full-on note, it's terrible. Um, so this is one of those uh, days where you have an idea, you try it out, and then you have to delete all of it. I am wiping all of this clean. Um, I do have a theory, maybe, that if I make the note play when you click the button and not when you land, that there might be that that might solve the problem right because when like i said when i'm clicking on the mouse it feels like it's rhythmic but when i hear it when it lands it's not rhythmic so it might just have to do with the variability of the um like the descent and like the impact of the platform um and maybe if it's based on when you click the mouse maybe um 
if it takes me more than 20 minutes, I probably will just say no thing. I think it'll just take me a second. So what um, when I'm doing something like this, when I'm taking a, uh, an idea that works in a different game and I'm going to try it out in another one, um, I usually just like go into the original game or the, the that I'm going to pull from and I just pull that entire section out and I just like like Frankenstein's monster. I just start hooking, hooking stuff up. Um, and it makes this huge mess. And then if it works, then I clean it and make sure it, I get rid of all the garbage that came with it. Um, and if it doesn't work, I just delete the whole thing and, and pretend like I, it never happened. Um, so I see this as sort of like an opportunity for this diary um, thing I'm doing because normally no one would ever see this and how what an awful mess it became. Uh, and so now you get to uh, enjoy the fun of, of hearing that awful cacophony of of piano garbage that I just played for you. Um, I'm not uploading that to the website. Like that's gone. You're the only ones who are ever gonna see this. So um, I'm hoping that tomorrow the task I choose will be uh, more effective. Uh, like I said, um, I really just saved the maybes for the end. And so I'm trying out a lot of maybes. Like, so I maybe I need to um, alternate. Like tomorrow I'll do something that is a, like an actual problem or an error or um, a bug and fix something and then try something new uh, just so that I don't come out of these days feeling like I, I wasted my time. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing some of these horrible mistakes. Um, usually I just describe them to my mom on the phone and she has no idea what I'm talking about. So uh, I'll <laughs> enjoy this journey along with me um, to the land of mediocrity. Uh, so yeah. I hope next time I have something successful to show um, and that my hair grows out and people will stop making rude comments about it. All right, I'll see you next time. <laughs>